Everybody, we are live on Facebook as well, and this is the second webinar of our seven part of uh, webinar sequence with Publist. And uh, today we will be talking uh, with Ben and Will about all the features, and uh, we'll go through all uh, the amazing stuff you can actually do with Publist. Uh, so stick around because this will be amazing uh, if you're considering the purchase and you want to know more about all the specifics, all the little details about Publist and uh, how, ca how can it help you to be more productive and your business uh, to grow. <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, why don't you start by introducing yourself a little again uh, in just a few, few sentences, few minutes, and then we'll jump right uh, into, your, uh, into your press deck and then we'll show everything uh, we just promised. Awesome. So uh, I'm Will. I founded Publis about two years ago. Uh, I've been working on it for quite some time now, and uh, we've gone through a lot of different iterations. Uh, before that, I worked on startups. Uh, I founded a nonprofit, and I uh, did research at MIT. Uh, I'm Ben. Um, I came on to Publis about a year ago. Uh, I met Will traveling through San Francisco. Been working on Publis ever since, and prior to that, um, I was a day trader. I worked on a startup in Seattle that was tokenizing the carbon trade, and now I'm here with Publist. That's amazing, guys. This is actually your first day. Oh, no. Yesterday we launched on Pitch Ground. Uh, how is it so far? It's oh, it's great. been amazing. I've been up all night just talking to everybody. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> I couldn't even sleep. Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. We just spent all, it was like all day just talking to people and learning how we can build a better product and learning what futures people wanted. It was amazing. Yeah, so the feedback's been incredible. Yeah, I saw that a lot of people are uh, talking about all the features they, they want and so on. Uh, and we will be discussing actually two uh, really important updates um, in, a, in a while, which is a new pricing plan and, uh, and the update about virtual folders, uh, which is like one of the most requested features. All right, guys. Uh, so I think we can uh, quickly jump into your uh, press kit and show us um, pretty much anything what we are trying to solve here with Publist and how it can help us. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's, let's share our screen. All right, uh, why don't we take this down. All right, let's see if I can, uh, everyone can see. Yep. Let me make it full screen. Full screen's good? Full screen's amazing. Perfect, all right, so. Um, let's let's start here. Uh, so what we're looking to solve with Publis is, is basically this idea that as we've moved to the cloud, uh, more and more of our applications are becoming silos of data. And so once we moved off our desktop, we didn't have this one file system that unified every, every piece of work that we did on one computer. Uh, instead, we had a bunch of different cloud systems that had different pieces of data in them and they weren't sort of intercompatible and and um, and that made it that made it tough to to organize and stay organized uh, because of these silos. And so, it uh, as we say here, it didn't come for free. Um, and so, as I mentioned, the web became this portal, and and we started to organize everything on here for good reason because the cloud is phenomenal and cloud software is amazing, and it does add a power and sort of a, a connectedness that we can't get with our desktops. Um, and so today, you know, we've got lock-in and limited portability. Data is in its sort of own custom format. Um, our files are scattered across the internet. There's, there's very little consistency between file systems and between the way we organize in these apps. And, and unfortunately with the web, the nature of the web is it's disorganized by default. I mean, Google is a very, very mm. valuable company because the web has this nature. Um, and so, as I mentioned, cloud is incredible. Uh, so just these are some statistics on cloud. Uh, storage alone is an $88.91 billion market. Uh, and we'll be spending $370 billion on all public cloud services. Uh, so this is a pretty incredible uh, way to illustrate how powerful cloud has become. Mm -hmm. So trends we've noticed as we've worked to build Publis um, are hyper-collaborative software, knowledge bases and node centralization, um, APIs and app platforms, and then sort of increasing focus on data control and finally condensing apps to fewer apps. So we, we saw this great expansion of apps and people got up, you know, 10, 12, 14, 16 applications that they were using in the cloud. 
Uh, and everybody sort of realized, well, this is not a good way to do work. This is too much. And so people in recent years have started to reel it back or use software to help them sort of condense their apps in a different way. And this is what Publis aims to do. Um, so we want to be a window into all your cloud files and we want to allow you to take all your data spread across the cloud silos and you know all your different applications, Dropbox, DocuSign, Zoho, uh, Trello, and, and basically allow you to look at all your files just like you had on the desktop. And so you sort of want to be a desktop for your cloud in the same way that desktops centralize all your files and, and put them in one easy to use file system, we will do exactly that. Um, and so this will allow you to, as, as many have noted, we'd like to move data between clouds. Uh, we'd like to be able to organize data from across applications all in one place uh, and sort of be a central access point for every file that you have stored in the cloud. Um, and so I think uh, actually it's better to do it live. So let's see if I can switch to the actual product. If uh, that's, that's kind of our statement of the problem. I, uh, I guess that, um, if you've got any questions, Jacob, I'd love to answer them. Otherwise, we can go and look at the product. Guys, I love the data you, you put there. Like, it really can be stopped. I mean, Amazon's, uh, like, one of the biggest streams of income is, is are their cloud services. So, I mean, you're tapping into a really cool market. <laughs> Definitely. It's, I mean, cloud software, as I mentioned, it's, it is incredible. And I love cloud software and I'm kind of addicted to it. But unfortunately, there is a price to pay for it. And that's, that's what frustrates me is that I am far more disorganized than I was even five years ago. And, and my data is <laughs> better. Um, and I'd like, I'm an organized person. So it's, it's just impossible to stay on top of all of it because you just are adding apps and adding data and adding files. I, I, I like actually that you, you are developing this product to scratch your own niche um, because uh, that's how are the best products are actually born. Uh, so, it's it's really cool. Uh, so I think we can we can slowly jump uh, to product walkthrough. I mean that there will be a lot of time to uh, show pretty much uh, everything else we want. Uh, so if you could share your screen and st start uh, slowly showing us uh, the features of Publist and uh, what we can actually do there, that would be awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's change up the screen share to Google Chrome. All right, so here's published, and uh, why don't we open up my inbox folder here? And as I noted yesterday, the uh, screen sharing on my laptop makes published a little bit slower than it actually is. Uh, so you'll notice a little bit of latency, but published is very fast. Uh, so let's. I guess we'll start here. So this is sort of. Uh, my my publish drive so one of the the before one, one more thing one, one more thing before you will continue i see more people are joining uh so uh quickly published is an amazing app which helps you to connect all the apps you're currently using uh to store uh search and uh share your files so you can connect your dropbox you can connect your google drive slack and many many more apps under one roof so you don't have to jump across all the different apps to find uh, one specific file you can do uh, everything from one dashboard which is uh, which is published and they also have amazing uh, storage plans so uh, we'll get into a little bit later so go on please yeah um, so we're aiming to centralize all your files in one place so the first piece of that is we do need to have our own cloud storage so much like much like Dropbox we offer a great sort of interface to store your files and this is because when you have all your applications connected uh, it's great to have access to the files. So if I open up, you know, let's say Slack, we can see here are all the files that I have in Slack. Here are all my different images. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's, that's convenient, but what's really most powerful is being able to organize them all in one place. And so being able to drag them, you know, if I want to just I see. Mm -hmm. my file, uh, I can take that and now it's stored and organized in one central place. So I'll go and put that in. Uh, so, so, so you, uh, if, if you were mentioning Slack, uh, those are the files I actually receive from someone on Slack. Let's say that somebody's sending me, I don't know, invoice or uh, Google or Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I can find it and access it in Publis too, right? Exactly. exactly. And then we should go through all the connected apps. Uh, mm -hmm. the big one all right. Yeah. yeah so let's, let's start. Here. That's a great idea. Um, so where, this is sort of the heart 
center of Publis, which is uh, the different applications you can connect. So, so far we support 11. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and sort of they cover, you know, major cloud storages and, and major productivity apps. And then we will be supporting a lot more apps. Um, mm. So we're able to just integrate as many as we can, as quickly as we can. Um, and we're definitely open to more and more app requests. I know I've got like five apps that I want to add to this list um, just from yesterday. So we can keep expanding this and sort of keep prioritizing uh, applications to build. Um, How do you decide on which applications uh, you want to integrate? Is it just by listening to your customers or um, do you have like some internal, uh, internal uh, like process to decide which, is, which one is the best? Yeah, the first few we decided on our own. Uh, so the first okay. few we just, just you know, thought what makes the most sense. Uh, we started with mm -hmm. a lot of cloud storage platforms and then from there on out it's just all been at the request of our customers and users. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how long does it usually, usually take uh, to integrate this? It's about a day. So it's about eight hours to, uh, to add one integration. So it's, it's pretty quick and Publis is set up so that we can do it. It'll be even faster to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, see some, I see some questions, guys. Um, we will be answering them all in the end of the webinar. Uh, so I'm writing all down, so don't worry, we will answer them. So guys, go on, please. Perfect. Um, yeah, so we've got, you know, as I mentioned, we've got some cloud storages. We've got some really cool ones like SFTP. Um, of course, we have P Cloud. You know, we've got your Gmail attachments. I'd say this was a big one for me because I deal with so many files in my Gmail, and I'm constantly sort of chasing mm. down emails. And now that uh, it's made a lot easier for me when I can just go and find everything I need, so contracts and zip files and images and everything that I need is right there, available right in my Gmail. Um, and all these files can then be centrally sort of organized as I need them. Uh, instead of dealing with Gmail as a file system, which is not meant to be, mm. we can deal with, uh, with Publix as a file system, which is exactly what it's meant to be. And if you go back to the Connected Apps page, I just want to clear up some confusion yeah. and go over a really cool feature. Um, I've been talking to tons of you guys about different, having different accounts per app. Um, there's a bit of confusion there. So whenever you guys make any account by any lifetime deal, you can, um, you can connect as many different integrations as you want. Um, what changes on the different tiers is how many accounts of the same type you can connect. So like right here, you see that uh, Will has three different Google Drives connected. That's what it would mean when you'd have three different accounts per app. And it's actually a really powerful feature as well. Um, you know, like I use tons of different Gmails. I, I have four of them myself and I connect them all um, with Publist and I can see all the files that have ever been sent in attachments on any Gmail. It's a great point. Yeah, we definitely noticed like we're working on the language around these things and you know, how we, how we sort of limit things. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. the account piece was a bit of a bit confusing yesterday, but hopefully that clears things up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's something we'll be talking about later with our new pricing plan and how how you can connect even more accounts. Yeah. Um, so why don't we uh, why don't we take a look at uh, let's see if I if I go and connect the Dropbox. Uh, we'll just remove an account, and we'll hopefully we'll be signed in. So you probably can't see the window that just popped up. Oh, there we go. So that was exactly. really fast. <laughs> um, well, it's convenient when you're already signed in. It, it's, it does make it faster when you don't have to enter. So, so, so you, you are already signed into your Dropbox and uh, Bubbles automatically detects it and uh, knows that uh, it's you. So it's just literally two clicks. Exactly. Yep. And so just to clarify, the way we connect is, is using a system called OAuth, which is very secure. So we go actually ask Dropbox for permission to access your files. And so mm -hmm. I've already, I'm already signed in and I've actually already sort of connected Publix as an app previously. So Dropbox will immediately, when we open Dropbox, will say yes and let me in. Mm -hmm. uh, but then if you are connecting for the first time, Dropbox will check in with you uh, and say, you know, here's, here's what Publix will use and we request exactly the data we need and nothing more. Um, nice and then Here's, you know, it, would you like to approve access? And so you'll see a window and then you can click approve and continue through the process. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's quite easy and you just go through and approve with the, the app and it's all sort of secure through and through. Is, is it this easy with all the other apps as well? Or some, sometimes um, the process is a little bit more difficult? So there's different, uh, for example, like, the, for all these apps, except for SFTP, the process mm -hmm. will be about the same. It's a few clicks and, and you're good to go. Just go to Gmail too. Um, 
Yes, that's a good one actually. So Gmail, Gmail, there is something to note. So if I go and connect a new Gmail, I'm guessing you guys can see this window, yeah? Uh, nope, we cannot. Okay, oh darn. There, that is, we'll just walk you through it. Yeah, so with, with okay. Gmail, so what I've, what, what's happened here is uh, I've clicked add new and a Gmail window has shown up and it's a, it's a Google URL. And actually, you know what, why don't we just, I think it's easy enough to change the share and show this. Or just take, take a screenshot, we should see it after you take a screenshot. Yeah, I'll just. Uh, yeah, see. yeah, yeah, I see it. All right, we got, but we got I our, see only this. <laughs> yes, okay, so we'll make it quick. Um, we got our little window here, so I'm gonna select my, my WC Herring account. And, um, and we'll notice that it says this app isn't verified. So this is an important thing we'd like to, to cover. With, with Google, they have a really in-depth approval process and they charge $75,000 um and so that is that's obviously not something we can afford right now but something we can afford pretty soon uh so while the app isn't verified it's still secure and it allows you to continue through so you just have to click advanced and then you can click go to published and then it will send you to the the screen that i mentioned where it'll let you confirm and authorize with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. allow and then it'll be good to go and so we see that the app uh Oh, there we go. So the, the sharing has stopped because the window closed. <laughs> if we go back to publish and share that, we'll see that the app has connected. And uh, uh, see. yeah, so it's now securely connected and all set up. But uh, just note that that advanced window, you just have to click it and uh, continue through. But you're right. That's really the only hitch. And with all of our other integrations, it's, it's really quick and easy. Yeah. And then, oh, well, let's take a look at some of our storage options. So right now we don't have a ton of storage options. We have S3 and public storage. Uh, but S connecting an S3 bucket is pretty easy. Um, yeah, so a lot of people really like this feature. I know only a couple people I was talking to are using Amazon S3. But if you want, if you're already using um, S3 and you already have your own S3 buckets, you can actually use them for storage instead of paying public for storage. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll show you right now how to connect it. Um, but basically, this just powers your public drives rather than the actual storage that we provide. Yep. Um, and so obviously, S3 is nice because it's pay as you go. And so you pay about two cents a gigabyte, um, which is not bad in terms of pricing. But some of the storage, just to note, we'll be adding Backblaze, DigitalOcean, and Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Backblaze is almost four times cheaper than Amazon S3. It's a, it's a phenomenal storage service. Um, so. Let's see if you think the screenshot hack will be a little quicker. Let's just walk you through it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, with, with S3, um, you just click install and then the uh, bucket credentials that you need to enter are uh, a nickname, an access key ID, a secret access key, and then a bucket name. And okay. then you mm -hmm. can generate this access key specifically for published. So that's S3, which will allow you to store. A We've lot got of data. some detailed instructions there on the little modal if you're doing that. So yeah, we do mm -hmm. provide it as a walkthrough. Um, and then obviously publish drives, this is our storage, and uh, these are the places we aim to allow you to centralize your data. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, so th those are the virtual folders we'll be talking uh, about in the future? Um, so virtual folders are gonna be an addition to this, so if you hit connect here, Will, yeah. by uh, Cloud Drives. So you're gonna have another option here with the virtual folders. And mm -hmm. the difference between the drives and virtual folders are that virtual folders don't take up your storage. Um, and then the other thing that a lot of people actually really cared about was that um, virtual folders are gonna be better for syncing. So where a published drive copies what you have in your connected apps um, and stores it onto the drive, the virtual folders just has a link to that app on its, on its actual like, connected app. Um, so everything's synced and it doesn't count against your storage. Right. So for example, if I have a, an attachment in Gmail uh, or mm -hmm. something in Dropbox, when I move that to a cloud drive, it will actually, as Ben said, create a copy of the file and securely store it on Publisk. But uh, if you move that to a virtual folder, then what it'll do is it'll create a, a, a virtual link to that file. And then it'll allow you, when you click on the file in Publisk, it'll open immediately in the parent application, whether it's Dropbox or Gmail or Google Drive. So let's say you had a document you know, sitting in Dropbox um, and you wanted to continue editing it and you wanted those changes to be reflected in Dropbox it'd be much better to just put it into your virtual folder to organize rather than storing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And this actually already, so this behavior actually already happens in cloud drives for certain files. So like Google Docs, for example, Google, 
the, has both the editor and the data. So it doesn't make sense for us to store anything more than just a title for a Google Doc. Uh, and so when we open a Google Doc, we'll see that it just opens immediately in the Google Docs editor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that makes it simple to sort of manage certain kinds of documents, but virtual folders will sort of make that behavior available for all your files. That's amazing. <laughs> when do you think this, uh, this feature is coming? Uh, we're hoping by early next week we can have that done. It's uh, the functionality sort of already exists on our back end, and it's really just setting up a new store type. And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you guys are fast. <laughs> <laughs> we try our best. We've been trying. Um, so All right. I guess if it's interesting, we can take a look at uh, some files or uh, what would be what would be most fun. I think if you could show us like the previews of the files uh, yeah, and yeah. How, how it all works. Um, so let's start with uh, my personal favorite, which would be a JavaScript file. Um, I don't think there's <laughs> any other file on, on Earth. So uh, we'll start here and we see that we've got, uh, this, was, this was sort of hinted at in the, in the comments uh, on some of the posts yesterday, but we've got uh, a nice sort of syntax highlighted code editor. Um, and so, yeah, so sorry, the screen share is making it a little bit slow. Um, there we go. There. So anyway, we can see the code viewer, obviously not as exciting to most people as it is to me, but, uh, but it is very easy to view any sort of code that you have uh, it's sort of published. Um, why don't we take a, so. JPEG or PDF. Yeah, nice. let's, let's start with, uh, so let's look at a PNG here. So we'll just open up this PNG. So images, obviously, mm -hmm. very very straightforward, uh, very easy to deal with. We get a lot of options to manage the file. So we can duplicate, move, rename, share, download. Uh, if I go to share the file, we'll see that we get a nice shareable link. Uh, pretty soon, this was a, also a highly requested feature. We'll be adding the ability to add passwords to this link. Also, permissions controls. So you can say, I don't want anyone to be able to download this. Uh, or you can control other things like edit access um, and who can access this link specifically. Um, and then why don't we look at a PDF? Uh, let's say we talk a bit about um, notes. Yeah, we'll see yeah. that. Um, and so, oh, I'll show a media file too. Yeah. Uh, so we'll open this PDF, and uh, it'll load quite quickly. Um, one thing we've optimized for is file loading time. So this is really fast. Yeah, it was maybe even faster uh, with Dropbox. I, I mean, it's really fast. I'm, I'm proud of that. We, uh, we use secure signed URLs, which make sure that you are the only person who can access your files. Um, mm -hmm. And they also expire after a certain amount of time. So Publish will automatically regenerate these secure URLs for you. You won't even be aware of it. But uh, every time you access a file, it's very, very secure. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can see in this PDF, you know, it's, a, it's, it's easy to just scroll through it and, and look through the contents. Uh, pretty straightforward. And then the last piece I'd like to highlight uh, that is something that we're going to be working on pretty soon is our, our media player. Um, so this is actually, I grabbed this, uh, I grabbed this file from P cloud. Um, actually, you know what, why don't we just do that? Let's go grab another song. So P cloud actually provides you with a few songs. And uh, so we'll go to my music and uh, let's take, let's take, you know, let's say we'll, we'll take Doc joy. Again. It's just a happy song. Um, so it's 6.7 megabytes, so it'll take a little bit to, to transfer from Cloud. But I know, I know, guys, that you were working on something uh, on audio, a uh, little more lightweight uh, player, right? Um, yeah. yeah, so as you can see, our, uh, while a little loud, our audio player looks sort of like a video player. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, obviously, we, you know, we, there are so many features we have to build, so we have to make sure to be careful with our time so that we can build the most important features. But audio and media playing was something that was very important to a lot of people. And so mm. it's something we're focusing on, not only improving our audio player to add playlists, um, further support for, for you know, easier controls and viewing album art and cover art, uh, but we'll also be making it really simple to embed videos and embed other media in your own websites and stream it directly from published. Um, so that's can, can you can you can you talk a little bit more about that because I find this topic like extremely useful and extremely interesting like embedding your own files and website. 
Absolutely. So obviously, because we're a storage, it becomes really easy to add your media files and store uh, and view media. So we have a video player and an audio player. Uh, but one of the most important things is to be able to access that media wherever you'd like. And that might include your website for whatever you may be working on. Um, and so we want to look at, you know, we, Wistia is obviously a great example of a good company that already does this. But because we want to centralize all your files, we want to make it easy to use your files however you want. And so that'll be uh, our media embedding will be something we're working on through next week um, and allowing you to take these, um, these media files that you store on Publish and generate a, an embed code so you can just plug it right into your website and you'll get a customizable player. Uh, it won't be customizable to start, but that'll be something that'll add you know, maybe next week, but it'll take a little bit of time to get the embedding done through, uh, through the, in the next few days um, and through next week. And then following that, we'll just be making our embeds better and better and better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all right. Uh, I have a few more questions, but could, could you please quickly uh, like show us your roadmap? Because a lot of people are asking about, about the stuff which is, which is coming. And I think it would be quite cool to show like uh, what are the things you are working on and what can we expect and uh, yeah. Yeah, so this actually, you know, we, um, and Ben, feel free to jump yeah, in definitely. here. We've we got a bunch of stuff on here. And, and this actually is, I need to update this roadmap um, because we, we've sort of adjusted our priorities because of what you guys were requesting. So it was really clear that there were some features that were really important to you, like media embedding and like virtual folders. And so those are actually going to get moved up and take priority over what already exists. Mm -hmm. um, so that's important to note that I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to today uh, be updating our, our roadmap to, to really show what's, what's most important to you and what's most important to us. Um, and so, so in the roadmap, so right yeah. From all the features you are getting uh, as a suggestions, maybe from PitchGround or for, uh, from your users, uh, the features you actually decide to work on uh, end up here, right? Yes. Exactly, yeah. And so you can always come to check here on what we're working on next. Um, you can always see if, if you know, your suggestion's already on the roadmap or if you want to reach out to one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, something to note. This is obviously, it's, this is what we want to work on in the next 12 months. And it's no insignificant roadmap. But... You know, everything that you see so far in Publis, I've built in six months. Uh, and so we're planning to hire uh, to, to get me some help because I'm the one developer working on this. Uh, and so I think that all of this, I could, I confidently feel like I could do alone, but with help, we'll be able to do this and even more. Um, so in the roadmap, we're, we're looking at some serious encrypted storage, which as we, uh, as we saw, will actually become an option for a storage that you can connect here. Um, and that'll be client-side encrypted using RSA uh, bank-grade security. Um, we're, we'll be, as, as we talked about, we'll be adding a ton of new integrations. We've got a big coming soon list that I'll be working through. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll have file retention and, and a trash feature, um, advanced sorting, and, and this will allow you to sort by lots of different characteristics of a file. Um, new search, and so we'll be overhauling search. And for some applications, we'll actually be able to support full-text search. So this might include um, Google Docs. You'll be able to search the full content of them. And that'll be an option that you can say, I'd like, I'd like to offer full text search and we'll request a little bit more data, or I wouldn't like to use full text search and we won't request that data. Um, and as, as we mentioned, this will be moving up. So our advanced media and file embedding. So, so these are like the Vistia-like features, right? Exactly. exactly yeah. mm -hmm. So that'll be mostly around embedding videos, uh, but we'd like to be able to embed any type of file. So if you've got PDFs or code or anything like that, we want to give you the native published viewer for those types of files. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. White labeling will be a big one for us. Um, obviously, I, I'd like to mention there will be uh, some additional white labeling fees um, just for the, you know, the nature of, of displacing our brand. Um, but white labeling will be a feature that's available to everybody. Um, the, the desktop app will be coming out. Um, we'd like to, as I mentioned, offer Backblaze, uh, Google Cloud, and DigitalOcean storage backend. So if you want to bring your own storage and not use public storage and uh, sort of trust in your cloud provider, you're welcome to do that. Mm. Um, saving and sharing documents to any connected app. So this was another highly requested feature, which was... Uh, the ability to take documents that you've got in published or in Gmail or something like that and move them into Dropbox, move them into your cloud storages. 
so that Publis allows for two-way flow between your applications. Right um, now, it's just a one-way, right? That you, it, yeah. will, it will just take the files from Dropbox and access it in Publis. And that was probably the most requested feature aside from um, the embedded videos and the virtual folders. So tons of people I talk to really want to move files, not just between their connected apps into Publis, but like between their connected apps themselves. Mm. Right? And, and that's something we can definitely make easy to do. Um, and then, uh, you know, finally finishing out the list, we've got drive sharing and member permissions. So we want to make it, one of the things that we are really frustrated with for cloud storages is that they, they deal with file permissions on an individual basis, which is convenient. And, and obviously we provide a sharing link, but uh, you end up with this spider web of shared files and you're never really sure what's shared with who and, and where, where things are and where you're getting files from because often they're just sort of shared into you. And so we wanna focus on sharing at a drive level. So you can have these drives and for example, you know, Will's files would probably be private, but for Publis, I would have Ben as a member. Uh, I would have you know, a few other members and, and be able to drag any file I wanted into this drive to allow people to access it. And so then I would know that the Publis drive is everything that people within Publis need to access and uh, be able to sort of confidently add files there instead of sharing them one at a time. Uh, so that's, that's sort of a little convenience piece we'd like to make easier. Um, and then finally, we'll be finishing out a sharing links portal so you can see all the sharing links you've generated for files. Um, although, as I mentioned, drives are more important, but this, mm. this, this is interesting, okay. Um, and then finally, we'll be talking about a Chrome extension, uh, which we'll be adding you know, once we've finished all this stuff. That'll let you save web articles, it'll let you clip images, it'll let you sort of clip anything you want from the web, as well as manage your downloads. Uh, so a download manager will come shortly after we finish the version one of the Chrome extension. Uh, so that'll let you sort of sync anything you download up to publish should you want to, uh, and make it really simple to manage that, because I that's, know my- that's, that's true, that was one of the features I, I, I saw quite often as well, that people just want to download stuff directly to published, and it will, be, it will be actually available with the Chrome extension, right? Okay. Uh, and there will be features, a part of this will be internal to Publish. So you'll be able to paste in links and Publish will go and get the file for you and just store mm -hmm. it right mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then we'll be sort of our advanced media player. So this is what I, this is largely the updates I mentioned to the music player uh, to support playlists and support artists and, and album art and everything. Uh, but this will also include customizable features for our video player and, uh, and making our video player that much more advanced and that much higher quality. Um, and then finally, we'll be releasing a mobile app, and this will be iOS and Android. Uh, there's a wonderful language called React Native, which lets us do both in one fell swoop. Um, and then finally, the biggest piece that we're really, really excited for is our collaborative app suite. Mm -hmm. So we think that you know a big reason that I use Google Drive more than I use Dropbox is because they have a great Docs, Sheets, and Slides editor. And so we think that we can take that and, and stretch it even further. So we want to obviously cover doc sheets and slides and have those be part of our collaborative work suite. But we'd like to extend that to PDF editing, annotating, note taking, image editing, um, any sort of anything that you need to, to work on your files. We'd like to have an application within Publish for that. Um, and then finally, that, that work app suite will be a nice way to segue into our third party app. So much like you can download applications on your desktop or get, uh, get applications from the iOS app store, we'd like to have a published app store where people can develop their own applications to work with files mm -hmm. the way they can imagine and be able to provide those to you for even sort of unlimited customizability within published. And if any developers are watching this, I'd love to talk to you guys about you know, app ideas. If there's any interesting way you can think of to use the data we have from all of our integrations. We're already talking to some partners right now about apps that are gonna be built. So I think those would be some really interesting conversations and uh, get those going, that'd be awesome. Yeah, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to talk. Um, guys, I love the roadmap. Uh, and what I want to say is, it seems like many different things you're trying to build, uh, but it's all around uh, your main vision, which is like centralized workspace, right? Because you don't want people to jump r really anywhere from published and to, to be able to do anything from published. And this is, this is what I like, that you are actually thinking about the bigger picture too. And not only right. about this feature would be cool, but does it actually resonate with our... Uh, with our vision and mission and what we are trying to accomplish here. It's, I love it. Absolutely. 
Yeah, we really want to work on bringing the desktop to the cloud. And so on our desktops, we can access any file, we can edit any file, we've got applications to do all sorts of things. And, and that's kind of missing in the cloud. Uh, and so we'd like to bring that there and, and make the, the different respective parts, starting with storage and starting with file organization, mm -hmm. available to you. All right, uh, I, I have a one or two questions about the roadmap, about things I, I just know here. Uh, advanced search. Um, I think this feature will be pretty amazing considering that if I'm connecting multiple apps, there will be like thousands of uh, different, different files. So can you tell me more about uh, like uh, what, uh, what search features uh, and what search functions uh, I will be able to use after you implement this? Yeah, the biggest thing right now is that um, soon you're going to be able to actually search through the text within the files. So right now we're oh, searching okay. the titles of your files, um, and I think it's going to be amazing once you can actually search the content. So a lot of times I'll know what I wrote about, but I'll forget, say, what I titled the document. Uh, so that's going to be really useful for me to actually find documents. Yep. And obviously this is a privacy thing that we do intentionally. So uh, we, we will allow you to choose whether you want the full text to be searchable or not, and then we'll request more mm -hmm. data. Uh, or if you want to stay private, then we will not request that data. I see, because it requires quite uh, different, like um, different permissions from the user to give you to access all these data, right? Exactly. So mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm. need to because normally, normally, as far as what I understand, you cannot actually access any of these documents. Yes. Yeah, so we can access them. It, it becomes accessible if you drag them into the public storage. Otherwise, yeah. they're inaccessible to us. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, go on. I just want to note, uh, you know, we just saw a demo of the search real quick. So mm -hmm. it'll pass mm -hmm. you search across all your applications, all your mm -hmm. syntax, all your stored files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And another question about white label, white labeling, because this topic is super popular uh, in PitchGround uh, since we have a lot of like marketing agency owners here and uh, entrepreneurs. So can you tell us a little bit more about it? How exactly it will work? Yeah. So you'll be able to. So in much the same way that publishes sort of this, this great file browser interface, you'll be able to take it and, uh, and obviously add your own brand to it and make it really simple to use for clients as a file browser for whatever you'd like. So mm -hmm. if you just want to hook up a few apps for a client and, and let them browse a specific set of files, you'll be able to do that. Um, we'll also be sort of making it easy to manage multiple installations of it. So you can take if you, if you work as an agency and work with many clients, you may want a different sort of setup for each client. And so you'll be able to white label on a per client basis uh, and, and, and sort of get things set up individually. Mm. All right, all right. Guys, I think this is pretty amazing because we have a lot of uh, questions we need to answer uh, right now. I was, I was noting them all. So I think you can still uh, keep sharing your screen um, if you want. Uh, so people can actually uh, keep keep uh, looking at your platform since it's quite nicely done. <laughs> and uh, we have the question from Jesse Neubert. Snowbird. I hope that I pronounce your name right. And the question is: Is the synth in real time? Uh, for example, when I update a file in Drive, will it update automatically in Publish? So that's a great question. Uh, one we get a lot and. The answer is, is not quite. So to, to prevent our servers from basically lighting on fire and pulling so much data all the time, uh, syncs, syncs run every few hours. So they run about every two to three hours auto, automatically. So data will be updated pretty quickly, but it's not instant for everything. Although mm -hmm. good to note that some applications, we're actually working on moving over to a new, more efficient system for syncing. And so some applications are actually instant. So for example, uh, OneDrive, um, OneDrive and pCloud and um, uh, I believe Zoho Docs are currently on this new system uh, that is, it will allow a latency of less than 60 seconds before changes are reflected. And then I plan to move Dropbox um, and Google Drive over shortly and then Slack and Gmail unfortunately will actually remain as uh, sort of time delay syncs. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I, I think it makes quite sense because like if you would have like, I don't know, tens of thousands of users and it would be like in real time, it would be really expensive to run. Like it would be crazy. Yes. So, uh, you know, as we get better and as we get bigger as a company, we'll definitely be able to improve that technology. And, mm. uh, 
and certainly be able to make it a lot faster. All right, thanks, Jesse. I hope that uh, that Ben will answer to your question. And let's let's go for Mario's question. Uh, can I connect like twenty drive, twenty uh, unique drive accounts? Yeah, I mean you can if you if you have the license for it. So so how our, our the structure of the tiers goes right now? Um, you can connect as many apps as you want, but we limit the number of accounts you can use per app. So the default is two. If you want to connect just two Gmails, two Google Drives, two Dropboxes, you can do that. Um, and then if you move up to the two terabyte plan, you get three. Um, and we also just have a new plan that came out where you can pay $99 to have that bumped up to 10. Um, and then it, it goes up on the four and six terabyte plan as well. The four gives you six different accounts. And then the six terabyte plan, it's unlimited. Yep. All right, amazing. Cool I use that one all the time. <laughs> All right, um, another question is from Yarek, and he's asking, what about QNAP app? I'm not really sure what QNAP is, but maybe you do, guys. I think they're a NAS provider. So I actually run a bunch of Linux storage servers and deal with a lot of NAS uh, storage. And so I, th I think that QNAP uh, is a NAS provider. So that's, NAS providers are a little bit more difficult because usually their APIs are not as good. but. Uh, I can take a look at that, and and if you see it pop up on the uh, coming soon, it, you'll know that uh, it's available. So I'll try to if it, if it is possible, I'll take a look at it today. And if it's on the coming soon by the end of the day, you'll know that I can support you now. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, all right, another question again from uh, Yarek Zapier. It's actually Zapier. Did you know that? It's, it's Zapier. Zapier, it's not Zapier. I've been wondering about that for a long yeah, time. We've, yeah, we've, we've definitely had some conversations about that. That's pretty funny. I mean, uh, I was listening, a little off topic, but I was listening to, um, to the interview with the founder. And that's actually the reason why they made their tagline, tagline uh, Zapier makes you happier. <laughs> so ah, people know, yeah, people know, know how, to, how to pronounce it. It makes <laughs> sense because they call them Zaps. Yeah. 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 All right. The question is, um, Zapier, <laughs> what features uh, you are planning to include? So we haven't quite planned that out completely yet, but I can tell you the features that are definitely going to be going to be included are taking files and obviously moving them through Zapier to to publish, um, and then probably we'd like to include some sort of file movement the other way. So taking files out of publish and moving them into other applications through Zapier. Um, and then beyond that, we probably would include some stuff with our notes app. So, you know, creating a note um, is very straightforward and we'd like to, you know, be able to allow you to export notes or import documents into notes um, and, and sort of have this rich text editor. And then uh, I, I think beyond that, we'll try to sit down and really plan it out and come up with a rigid idea for exactly what we want to do. But mm. definitely the new files around would be obviously very important. And then mm -hmm. as we as we have more apps moving data around in the same way that you use Zapier uh, to move data through like a Google Sheet. Mm -hmm. Makes all sense, guys. All right, question from Konstantin, uh, one of our beta testers, congratulations. <laughs> uh, could we have a file tagging on the cloud? Yes, definitely. So tagging is something that, uh, it's actually not a major enough feature to make it onto the roadmap, but it's something I'd like to get done in the next two weeks. Um, so the way we're planning to do file tagging is there'll be automatic tags that'll be applied that will sort of be invisible in the background and that'll be like file type, um, they created different users who are associated with the file, mm. and a few other pieces of metadata to make it really easy to sort by those tags. But mm. then also you'll be able to add your own sort of color coded tags to, uh, to appear sort of right alongside the file so that you can you know, say, I want this as group projects or, or something else and make it really simple to sort on tags. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, Yarek, another question. Thanks a lot for being that active. All right, the question is, will collaborative work suite or will have API integrations like Google has? Yes, definitely. So we already have a little bit of a public API that allows you to upload files. Um, we haven't written documentation for that, uh, although it does exist. Uh, and, and that will be updated soon. But with our work app suite, we definitely want to provide sort of a rich API interface. Uh, mm -hmm. I know, I mean, I spend most of my day, as you can see, working with tons and tons of APIs. And so I'm a big fan of them and uh, want to make publish just as easy to access. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, question from Jesse. I have two separate brands, 
each would need a separate white label in future. Will I need to buy two licenses now or can I just buy one license at, and pay two, two X for separate white label later uh, when it's offered? Um, I think exactly the, the latter option is yeah. exactly right. Uh, so you can get one license and then, you know, white label as a feature is not, yeah. there's no sort of limit on the licenses there. But then, as I mentioned, there is a little bit of an additional cost with light labeling because it costs us a lot. Um, and so that will be, you can purchase the license now and that'll be made available to you in the future uh, for your grants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And we have, I believe, last question here, again from Konstantin. It's not a question, but it's a suggestion. Please consider the next cloud slash on cloud integration so we can connect our, our cloud storage on our servers. That sounds great, funnily enough. Uh, those are about to go live on coming soon. Uh, so you'll be able to see those appear definitely by the end of the day. Um, so really looking forward to adding those. <laughs> All right. Uh, guys, there are a few more things we want to discuss before uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, so there is actually a new webinar we are planning um, on, on, this, on this weekend, which is quite unexpected, but we decided the topic is so interesting that uh, we will cover it uh, in the special and bonus webinar uh, during this uh, weekend. Can you tell us more, guys, what the topic will be? Yeah, so we want to just go through everything that we can do with our app suite. Um, so, you know, we're building, in the future, we're going to be building tons of different apps. Um, right now, you know, it's going to start with the simple ones like, uh, you know, our pages editor, our spreadsheets editor, um, our PDF editor, things like that. But especially once we open it up to third-party developers, there's just so much that you can do with the data that we've collected. Um, we really want to go through that and see if anybody has any ideas and just open up that discussion. Yeah, um, so we're, that's definitely, it'll be a relatively quick webinar uh, because we'd like to touch on, so we've got some, some graphics in place for that to show off the apps we're planning to build. Uh, but we definitely want to show off our collaborative app suite because that is something we're really excited to launch. Yeah, I'm really excited too. I mean, it was in the bottom of your uh, of your roadmap, but I think it's one of the biggest biggest features you were planning, right? Definitely, apps are apps are as you know for any operating system, it needs apps, and so they are a crucial part of the public solution. And just for the users, I mean, I think that's going to completely change the way that people interface with public. So, so, so the webinar uh, it will be on Sunday. Uh, it's a it's a best for uh, for the developers, for example, to watch. Uh, no, I think it's for anybody, really, yeah. because, I mean, we can have some really interesting conversations with developers about apps they could build once we open it up to third-party developers. But then for the user, I mean, our apps are going to completely change the way that people interface with Publis. I mean, right now, Publis is great for, you know, finding all your files from all yeah. your apps and organizing them. Um, mm -hmm. but once, you know, as more apps get built, Publis is going to be a place to not only find your files, but then to edit them, to collaborate on them. It's really the only place you need to go to do anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it, guys. So, yeah, I will create a separate Hey Summit event and I will post it into the group so you guys can, uh, you guys can sign up and join us as we will discuss it. All right. Um, so, I think there's a one last thing we need to discuss, which is a new plan we actually included here, which is a $99 add-on pack. Uh, so, it will allow you to uh, add 10 account integrations per app or, um, or integration and stackable. So more integrations you need, you will just buy these add-ons. Guys, what is the main reason behind uh, why we decided to do this? Yeah, so, so right now you can add, you know, by default, you can add two accounts for every different app. Um, but we just found that tons of people have lots of different accounts, say, especially for apps like you know, Google Drive or Gmail. Lots of people have tons of different Gmail accounts that they want to connect. Uh, and that wasn't included in our other tiers. So we wanted to give people a way to just connect as many accounts as possible without having to buy more storage. Yeah. And one thing to note is our, our, our two terabyte, four terabyte, and six terabyte tier do include additional apps with the six terabyte actually giving you un unlimited accounts per app. Uh, but this was important because we don't want people to worry about how many accounts they're connecting. And so we want to make it really easy to connect. Yeah. Many yeah. Terabyte. All right, so, so let's go to, to the like very specific uh, use case. So let's say that I'm, uh, I have a multiple Gmail accounts. Uh, I have my personal, I have my work, I have second personal and some other stuff too uh, in, in the Gmail. So in total, I have five, uh, five different uh, accounts in Gmail. 
So in this case, uh, this $49 plan uh, wouldn't be enough, right? Because I have five accounts in Gmail. Right. Yeah, so what I can do is just buy this add-on pack and I can add uh, 10 accounts per integration uh, or per app. So it means that it will allow me to, uh, to add all the accounts I actually need uh, to my Gmail. And we are still talking about one app. So uh, it, will, it will allow you to, um, like here, if you will have like Dropbox, it will allow you to have two accounts and uh, two Google Drives and so on. Does it make sense? Is it right? That's yep. exactly right. All right. Okay, guys. So I think that's pretty much it now. Uh, I didn't notice any more questions. And uh, let's actually continue and let's, let's see the webinars we will have in upcoming days. Uh, so if you guys still haven't signed up, uh, you can sign up on publish.pageground.com and uh, let's go through them. There isn't actually the webinar on the, uh, on the Sunday we'll be doing, but uh, I will update it really soon. So you can sign up on the Sunday's webinar too. So today we uh, did published features walkthrough in depth and details showcase. Um, and we did uh, some Q&A and on the Monday, uh, we'll be talking about the B2B cloud market in general and why is it broken? Guys, can you tell me like really shortly, why do you think it's like broken? What, do you, what would you do differently? Well, the, uh, as, we, as we talked about a little bit in the beginning, we think that uh, you're losing, there are some things you give up when you, you go to the cloud uh, and, and you're sort of losing the convenience and ease of the desktop. So the B2B cloud market ends up being these silos and each, each piece of software is just one more place for your data to live and one mm -hmm. more place all right, so this we will discuss on 29th and uh, 30th of July, we'll talk about your productivity because what can kill really, literally your productivity is just searching for files like all over uh, again and again, which is, which is horrible uh, because I mean, I was searching for some invoices, even though it's like 10 minutes a day, just searching for file, files or seven minutes a day, it will add up and <laughs> Uh, it will it will just take a big chunk of your of your week, and you could be actually spending with something which is more productive than just uh, jumping all across the cloud files you have. So we'll go through like specific tips, um, specific tips and tricks you can use uh, to uh, to boost your productivity. On thirty first, uh, thirty yeah thirty one of July, we'll talk about public security uh, because that's one of the biggest concerns of. Uh, of people who are basically working uh, on the cloud, uh, are my files safe? And we'll cover uh, that your files are really safe with Publist. And on the 1st of August, uh, which is Thursday, uh, we'll talk about workflow optimization hacks. Uh, and on the Friday, how to securely share, since and migrate your data. So please guys, make sure you will join. You will sign up on publish.pitchground.com. Uh, it's completely for free. Uh, replays are available here on um, publish.pageground.com uh, forward slash replays uh, or on our Facebook page or in our Facebook group. I believe that you guys are pretty much everywhere. So now without further ado, let me tell you how you can buy your uh, published license. Uh, the cheapest plan is for $49 uh, lifetime. Of course, it means that you don't have to pay monthly or annually. You just pay once and that's it. And Publis is an amazing app if you just uh, want to be more productive and if you want to have all your files under one, uh, under one roof. And uh, let me tell you, these guys, they are adding some pretty kick-ass features we already discussed here. And if you buy basically any license here we have, uh, which are mainly different with the, with the storage and apps you can connect, you will have access to all the integrations, uh, I mean, to all the future updates and all the all the features uh, they will be implementing uh, so if i were you i just wouldn't wait right now and i would just grab one before it's still available and there are multiple uh plans you can choose first uh, it's a 500 gigabytes for 49 dollars and it allows you to have two accounts per app so as we already discussed uh if you have two gmail accounts uh you you wanna you wanna um you wanna integrate with Publis. 
uh, this is actually for you. But if you have more and you don't want to go for a high, higher storage plan, you can use this new add-on pack, uh, which, is, which is the thing we added just yesterday. And it will allow you to add more integrations uh, per app and it will, it will give you 10 account, account integrations. And the best thing is that it's stackable. So now uh, you can still work with this plan or with any plan here, uh, except, this, except the last one because that's unlimited. And you can stack as many add-ons, uh, 99, 99 plans as you, as you want. And it will still keep uh, adding up all the, all the integrations and so on. Then uh, there's a published two terabytes plan. Um, which uh, comes with one terabyte bonus. So if you purchase until uh, Sunday 28th, which is this, this week, uh, we'll give you one terabyte bonus. And uh, there's a published four terabyte plan. Of course, there's a, there's a bonus as well. So uh, if you take action really fast, it will be, uh, you, you'll get more storage space um, by the end of the Sunday. And there's an unlimited uh, plan, uh, unlimited when it comes to integrate uh, accounts per app, but uh, limited in terms of storage. And I mean, six terabytes of storage, it, it's pretty huge. Uh, but I mean, for video makers and for people who work with really huge files, this plan is amazing. So guys, make sure you will go to pitchground.com forward slash product, products forward slash published, and you will uh, check and you will purchase uh, the published right here. Now it's really simple. You can use your PayPal, you can use your credit card. Um, and of course you need to log in because we are uh, building a community. We are not only uh, on this site where you can buy something. We are actually a community of people who like to share their experience, share their reviews. And uh, it's really simple and fast. After you will buy, you will receive a code directly into your inbox. You will use to redeem the lifetime access of published. So, that's about it, guys. <laughs> to note uh, with the with the URL, it's a capital P and published, and um, oh yeah, one terabyte bonus. Um, we you can actually contact us. We're giving those out manually, so just reach out to us and let us know what you got, and we'll give you your bonus in terabyte. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for clarification. Uh, anyway, the link is available if you're watching this on uh, on a Facebook. It's available on uh, in description, and yeah, make sure that uh, it's a capital P. Uh, because we're still working on some our pitch ground version two optimizations. Uh, so you need to uh, have the capitalization right. Uh, all right, and about the manual, uh, manual adding of one terabyte bonus. Uh, guys, make sure you will take action, take action uh, before Sunday uh, this week. So uh, Ben and Will can manually add you uh, this one terabyte bonus, which comes with a, with a two terabyte plan, uh, with a four terabyte plan, and with a six terabyte plan. So thanks a lot guys for watching. Thanks a lot for all the questions. This was amazing. Is there anything else you would like to add guys? That was Thank great. you so much guys. It was, it's fun as ever. Really, really love the questions and really love that we can share publish with you. Yeah, keep all the feedback. Right. Great. Amazing. So uh, please make sure you will join us live uh, on Sunday where we'll be discussing all the apps and everything which will be available in the future. It will be so amazing. Uh, I will create a post. I will create a Hey Summit event so you can sign up. And um, about what we will do on, uh, on the page ground side, we'll be creating uh, all the product videos, all the overview videos. So there will be tutorials so you can watch it. And there, there are all the replays of the webinars available on the YouTube as well on Facebook and in the Hay Summit itself. So if you miss this webinar, it's okay, you can still watch it. All right, thanks a lot guys and have an awesome weekend. Take care, talk to you soon. Everybody, we are live on Facebook as well and this is the second webinar 